Yo guys, welcome back to this tutorial on CICD. This is the second part in that tutorial. Uh, in this one, we're gonna be talking about our building aspect. So the first part of the CICD pipeline that we're gonna be creating in this tutorial is the build aspect. And we're gonna be using a tool uh, or a service called AWS Code Build. Now, Code Build is a fully managed service that allows you to sort of just define a declarative way of doing a build. So what is a build? You know, is that just a test or do we build or do we produce an artifact and what happens at each step in that build? It's a fully declarative way of defining that and you can sort of just execute that and you know you just tell code build hey this is what i want to run and it will handle um, all of that you just specify a runtime and a base operating system and the rest is all good so super super easy to use so we're going to be using that um, first of all i quickly want to go through the environment that we're going to be using uh, throughout this tutorial series and just kind of sort of go over and just sort of like show that because i don't want anything to be sort of unclear i want you guys to sort of get a really good idea about what's being used and please if you have any questions about how things were set up or whatever, please let me know. So in, first of all, this is the environment that we're sort of gonna be building. So here we have the user. So this is uh, me here in this example. And I'm going to have a staging load balancer. And behind that, I have an auto scaling group with two instances in it. Um, and this is our uh, staging environment here. Like it can scale out based on CPU, um, based on whatever. It's based on CPU at the moment, but we won't be using that aspect. But it's just a simply two instances behind a staging load balancer. And then we have the same for, for production, right? It's a production load balancer, different endpoints with two different instances behind it. So we're gonna be using this exact setup. Um, and it's very, very simple, but I just wanted to show you guys that because I'm not gonna go through the whole video setting this all up because it takes you know, like five minutes to get this going, but it's really unnecessary to set this up in this clip because we're gonna be talking about CICD, getting that application rolling. All right, so now that you guys know what we're using, uh, here is those two load balancer endpoints. Now the instances that are created, they're actually created with something called user data. So it's just like a bootstrap script that you can sort of specify when the instance is coming online, hey, just run a couple of things for me so that it's sort of set up nicely and you know, it, it actually follows a really nice concept of immutable infrastructure, right? We can design our instances to just have everything that's needed from the get-go um, in order to us, so, so we don't need to worry about things like configuration management. Like I said, managing servers is just meh. So, here uh, is the user data that I have. It's just a couple of lines here of bash. Um, all that I really want to do is install Python 3.5. Um, I need to install Ruby for the code deploy agent, which we're going to be using later. And I'm also going to install Flask because Flask is the web application framework we're going to be using. And also PyLint because we're going to be doing our linting with PyLint. And I also just, I just want that stuff to be on the operating system so I don't have to install it later. Um, so this is a really nice way of doing that. Of course, just IP tables. Um, and here we're just going to install the code deploy agent down the bottom here. And here's just calling the install. So very, very simple, no smoke and mirrors. It's just really setting up Python, making sure Flask is on there and installing code deploy. That's really easy, easy as it is. So that is running on the two EC2 instances that are in each environment. So that's all set up and all good. So let's jump straight into code build. So this is code build. This is the front page here of code build. Now I'm gonna be doing everything in the GUI um, but please don't do anything in the GUI if you're doing this in real life. Use CloudFormation to build everything because you will have an awesome declarative way of defining all of your infrastructure and your developers will love you and it's freaking awesome. Okay, so let's create our project though. Here is create project. Now I'm gonna give my project a, a name. So this is gonna be Flask Arena, just can be our project. Um, we don't really need a description. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, the source provider, so, so where's my code actually stored? So we're gonna be storing our code in GitHub, of course, this actual project is in GitHub, so I can just choose GitHub here, and of course I have Bitbucket, or I have, can have it in S3, or code commit, um, which is another service, just like a place to store your code. Um, but I'm gonna store it in GitHub, and it's actually a repository in my account, so I can just click here and choose the repository, which is really nice, um, and that's it there, so Flask Arena. So it also gives me the option here to add a webhook. Like, do I want to add a webhook to this repository to say that anytime something's updated on that webhook, you know, this like code build can pick that up and build it and, you know, continue down the pipeline at any other step. So this is really, really handy. So I definitely want to have this. And if we actually have a look at our project over here, so this is Flask Arena here, I don't have any webhooks here. So you can see that there's nothing there and I don't need to add them because code build will automatically add them for me, which is really, really cool. So here is some environment specification. So how do I build this project? It needs to know how it builds it. So you can specify a Docker image um, or you can specify a, a Docker image that AWS hosts themselves. So it's all built in Docker, of course, because it's, it's meant to be very, very fast, right? So I wanna have Ubuntu as my base operating system. And of course, they're going to add more operating systems here in the future. 
And you can choose your runtime. So we have .NET Core, we have uh, Golang, Java, Node, Python, Ruby, everything you could imagine. So I'm going to use Python because we're building a Flask application, right? It makes it really easy that I can just choose the language straight there. I also get to choose a version or a runtime. So here I have 2.7.12, I can choose that, or I can choose uh, 3.5.2, um, which is, you know, it's not, it doesn't have the absolute latest version, but 3.5.2 is more than enough, and that's using Python 3, which is the future. So here is a really cool bit. So build specification. So use the build spec in the source code root of the directory. So, you know, I can either choose to insert random build commands in here that I want to happen during this build process, or I can just say, hey, use the build spec YAML file in the root of the repository. And this is really cool. This is where the magic happens. So let's just quickly jump over to the root of the repository. So here it is here. If you have a look at build spec, here I can actually define exactly what happens during a build. So I have a couple of phases here, but there's so much more, there's, there's more phases than this. And I'm just gonna keep this very simple for now. I have a basic install phase where I'm gonna run a couple of commands. And all I'm gonna run is a pip install and upgrade. So I'm gonna upgrade pip, make sure it's the latest. Um, and then I'm gonna install a couple of packages that are defined in my setup.py file. So in my setup.py file, I just have flask and pylint, and that's all I have in there. Um, and so that running this here, we install E and then uh, pointing it to the uh, local directory, so the current working directory, we'll go and have a look in the setup.py and install what's required there. Now, the reason that I want to do that is because I want to use pylint um, and I need to have pylint installed in order to run it. So I'm going to go and it's going to go and look at my setup.py and install pylint and then it's going to move on to the next step. So the next step in this case is our pre-build phase and I'm gonna specify some more commands here. So I'm gonna say, hey, go through the current directory and find all the Python files and then run pylint on them. You know, Run pylint on them so I can get an accurate feedback of all of the current uh, linting status for all of my Python files. Um, which is really nice. And then I'm gonna run the unit tests that are associated with my project. So, you know, these steps have to complete successfully in order to move on to the next one. So this is really nice. And there's different phases that you can add. I think there's about eight or 10 different phases that you can add in here. So you can be extremely thorough with how you're actually building and how you're actually testing your application. Um, this is a very, very simple case where all we're really doing is running a linter and a test set. So very, very easy. Um, and then at the end, you can produce some artifacts. So here I'm just saying, hey, grab everything that's in the repository and pass that on to the next phase. So that's going to be your artifact. So zip everything up and just pass that on to the next phase in the build. But you don't even really need to have an artifact as well. So you can choose to have that or not. Um, discard pass is just like if I want to, to sort of bring everything into the root directory of that zip and then that root directory, you know, would just contain everything in a flat level. Um, but I just want to keep my paths nice and, and intact in there. So I'm just going to keep it like this. So this is a very, very simple example, but this is how you define the steps that are actually going to happen in that build. So jumping back over to code build again, um, I can say, where do I wanna put the artifacts from this build? And I can choose that there's not gonna be any artifacts or I wanna put the artifacts in S3. Now, this is really, really cool. S3 is just like an amazing glue service that lets you put things in and pick them up. Now, what we're gonna be using code build for is we're gonna have our build run and we're gonna have our artifacts put into S3 and then we're gonna have code deploy be able to grab them from S3 and deploy them out to the environments that it needs to deploy them to. So this is gonna be a really handy sort of drop off pickup spot for us. So we're gonna have Amazon S3 here and the namespace, I'll just choose build ID. So what it's gonna name the zip file as. Um, and I'll just choose a uh, Flynn bucket, right? Just a, a basic bucket where it's going to dump those files. So very, very simple. Now you need to specify a service role um, that code build is going to use to call those other services. So it's going to need access to S3, of course, um, to do this. So that's a service role that you can create um, that just has the requirements needed to, to be able to interact with those other services. Um, and if you don't have this, it can create it for you automatically. So I'm just going to choose that one because I've already got it. Um, you can choose some things like advanced settings. So you can do encryption keys for you know, encrypting the, the things that are stored in S3, all that sort of stuff. Um, of course, you can run, uh, if you want to produce Docker images, you would have a privileged Docker container that runs that can call uh, upstream to Docker to sort of create an image and ship that as well. Um, you can choose a packaging type. I'll just use zip here. Um, and you have things like compute type, right? Like how much compute power do you want to give your build? And maybe you want to give it 15 gig of memory and eight CPUs. Maybe it's doing some really intensive build and it needs a lot of processing power to get through all those tests, right? So here you can actually choose the size of the container that's going to be running and how much power that has, which is really, really cool. So I'm gonna go with three gig and two vCPUs. That's more than enough. Like code build is one of those services where you're charged by the minute um, and it's a very, very, very cheap service. You're charged by the minute of build time. So you're not paying for this while it's not doing anything. And this is one of those great services that you get from AWS where you pay just for what you use. So you don't have to worry about the overhead of the costs for, not, for doing something that you know, you're not doing. So this is really, really cool. 
So here we have some environment variables as well. We can specify uh, a name and a value of a key and a key and a value that we can get out of here. Um, and we can specify a whole bunch of environment variables that we might want to use during our build. Um, and of course, there's also environment variables available in the build that are referencing you know, the version, who made the PR, all that sort of stuff, right? That stuff's available as default, but there's also environment variables that you can specify as well, which is really nice. Um, now, one of the really cool parts about this is you can actually choose a key value from the parameter store. And what it will do is, you know, these are, these are your secrets, right? If you have some sort of secret that you need to use during your test phase or your build phase here, um, you know, it can be specified here and you can have a KMS encrypted value that gets pulled down and decrypted as needed. Um, and then it can be used in your build. So again, you would need the IM role access to be able to decrypt from KMS in order to do this and interact with the parameter store. Um, but this is really, really nice and allows you to handle secrets really, really easily and really, really in a safe manner, which is the most important thing. So I'm not gonna add anything in here though. Um, of course you have tags as well that you can associate. So if this is tagged to a certain team, they can see their costs and how much they're spending. Amazing way to get cost insights is to tag absolutely everything. So I would highly recommend doing that. Um, so that's pretty much all the settings that we need for code build. So I can just go ahead and hit continue. And that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna hit save and that's it. So there is our code build project already all set up. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just go and have a look. If we flick back over to our webhooks now and I just hit refresh, we should see now here we have a code build uh, AWS Amazon webhook. So it's for pull request and push. So if any push happens on our repository, so someone pushes some code in, um, our webhook is gonna get called and it's going to build the application or run through the steps that are defined. Um, and then it can hand off to the next part in the pipeline or whatever. And also if any pull request is done, it can run the associated tests and just sort of give instant feedback on the test aspect um, of this pipeline, of this code build aspect. So we're really gonna get the validation that we want on each pull request because we want to increase the confidence that developer has in what they're doing in that pull request. And um, we're also gonna get any sort of build that'll happen from a merge happening into the master branch. And we'll go through that later as we sort of define the pipeline, we talk about code deploy, all that sort of stuff. So this is just the code build side of it. I just wanted to sort of show you guys what that's like and get a feel for that before we sort of move on to the next bit. All right guys, so everything's looking good. We've got all of our configuration set up here in code build. Now that's pretty much it for this clip. I just wanted to talk about code build in this one and sort of get that rolling. Uh, in the next clip, we're gonna be talking about code deploy. And then after that, we're gonna wrap it all up in code pipeline. So join me for those clips and I'll catch you then.